In this video, I'm going to talk about high-pass filters and low-pass filter circuits. And high-pass filters are filters um, that filter out lower frequencies and allow higher frequencies to pass through an AC circuit. And an example of a, what you would use a high-pass filter for may be like a tweeter speaker that plays the the high the high frequency sounds and then uh, a low pass filter is the opposite it filters out high frequencies and allow low frequencies to pass through an AC circuit so an example of this might be like a woofer speaker okay so there's a couple of formulas we're gonna have to understand in order to um, to use these high pass and low pass filters so if you have in an AC circuit basically a sine wave coming in and a capacitor okay and then we have resistor and ground okay so uh, unlike a DC circuit a capacitor actually does uh, transfer that sine, sine wave across that capacitor and uh, it does oppose the current flow but it does let it pass and the opposition to the current flow of the capacitor is called the reactance Okay, and there's a there's a formula for cal calculating that. Okay, so reactance is X sub C. Okay, and that's going to be equal to one over two pi times the frequency times the capacitance. Okay, and the frequency is in hertz. Uh, the capacity, excuse me, the capacitance is in farads, and the uh, the reactance is in ohms. So this is Similar to a resistance, but it's you'll notice it varies with the value of the frequency. So if you have the capacitance the capacitor uh, held at a at a value, the uh, the reactance will change. It's inversely proportional to the frequency. So basically, at as the frequency goes down, goes to zero, the um, the reactance uh, gets very large. Okay, so. Uh, low frequency, high reactance. And then the inverse is also true for high frequency, uh, reactance gets goes very low. Okay, so the reactance does not uh, alter the output frequency of the input signal, but it's, uh, it's generally going to lower uh, the output amplitude. Okay, so, so with that in mind, if we go back go back to this circuit, so to calculate the overall impedance of this uh, of this circuit with the capacitor and the resistor, so the the overall impedance is the total opposition to current flow. Okay, so and the impedance is z. Okay, and that's equal to uh, let's say the square root of the reactance squared plus the resistance squared, and uh, so the reactance is in ohms. The resistance is, is in ohms, and therefore the uh, the impedance is also measured in ohms. Okay, so if we go back to this circuit, um, okay, so this circuit where you have the the capacitor uh, first and the resistor uh, connected to ground. Okay, this is where you're going to have a high pass filter. Okay, so in V out is what's measured across this resistor. So this would be V out right there. Okay, and we can calculate V out using this equation. And that's going to be equal to V in. Okay, so that's times the resistance divided by the impedance okay so um, so this is for a high pass filter and so this will allow uh, high frequency waves to pass through unimpeded and then as you get lower and lower frequency the waves will pass through but the amplitudes are going to be shorter so if you have a 10 volt peak to peak input sine wave it's it's going to uh, go down to close to zero at uh, at very low frequencies and it's going to be close to 10 at very high frequencies. 
Okay, so I've set up a, um, a half-pass filter circuit, and that is a uh, 15 nanofarad capacitor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And <clears throat> the input signal is going to be coming from this function generator, so it's going to be a sine wave. And that's what's powering these rails, so that's what's uh, powering the circuit. Then I have a, a oscilloscope probes hooked up to the, uh, the input which is coming from the uh, function generator and that's going to be in channel one of the oscilloscope okay so then I also have um, channel two hooked up to V out so that's what's connected to that uh, resistor leg there so that's going to be what's in channel two okay so what I'm going to do then I'm going to set okay I'm going to set the amplitude to 10 volts peak to peak and then for the frequency, I'm going to start with uh, kind of a low frequency, maybe 300 hertz. Okay, I'll turn that on. Okay, so so now, um, right now I'm only looking at channel one, which recall is the input voltage. Okay, so and my volts per division is set to 0.2, but these probes are are at times 10 mode, so that is actually uh, two volts per division okay so if I maybe adjust that down there and we count the divisions there's one two three four five slightly more than five I'm gonna call it five so five times two so that's ten volts peak to peak so that's the input signal um, that's what we expect that's what we set the function generator for um, so we just want to make sure that that's correct so now I'm gonna turn off channel 2 or channel 1 and go to channel 2 okay so and that's not very good looking but okay let's get this so we can measure this so I'm set at uh, 10 millivolts for division so again we have to multiply that by 10 because that probe is also set to times 10 so it's 100 millivolts per division and so there's a, about three three divisions so that's 300 millivolts so V out is much lower than V in V in is 10 volts uh, what's coming out of there uh, is 300 millivolts frequency is the same although it, it is shifted a little um, there's a there's a formula for calculating how how that how that sine wave shifts okay so now we're gonna just kinda start bumping up the frequency so we'll go to 1 kilohertz okay and we'll go back here and so you can see the, the amplitude is bigger okay so so there's one two three four five divisions and I'm set at uh, 20 millivolts per division multiplied by 10 that's 200 millivolts uh, times 5 divisions so now we're at 1 volt peak to peak so it's getting higher uh, as we increase the frequency okay so now if we go to maybe I don't know 50 kilovolts okay so this is going off the scale okay so one, two, three, four, call it four and a half divisions, a little more than that, but and now we're at 0.2 volts per division multiplied by ten, so we're at two volts per division. So that's uh about nine volts peak to peak, a little more than nine maybe. Okay, so now we'll bump it up one more time. And so we're at fifty kilohertz, we'll get a hundred kilohertz. Now we should be close to 10. Let's see. So yeah, just under, just under, let's say one, two, three, four, five divisions. I think that's probably as close as we're gonna get. We're, we're probably not gonna get exactly up to 10, but um, so you can see when we get to uh, 100 kilohertz, um, V out is pretty much equal to V in, so that's what that's what the high pass filter does. It allows these uh, high frequency 
uh, waves to go through unimpeded or less impeded than the very low frequency waves. Okay, so for a low pass filter, um, very similar to a high pass filter, except the uh, the position of the capacitor and resistor are swapped. So, so coming off a of VN, now you have a resistor. Okay, and then you have the capacitor connected to ground. Okay, and then that'll be V out. So now V out is the um, basically the 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 resistance uh, or actually the reactance measured uh, over the capacitor. Okay, so now there's a different slightly different formula for V out for the low pass filter. Okay, and that's going to be V in times the reactance divided by the impedance. Okay, so recall for the for the high pass filter it was the resistance divided by the impedance. For the low pass filter, it's the reactance divided by the impedance. Okay, so now I've swapped the position of the resistor and capacitor. So now this is a a low pass filter and we're still gonna power it from this function generator and so I have the channel 2 of the oscilloscope hooked up to the V out so we're going to measure that and if we start at the low frequencies again like we did with the high pass filter so I'm going to start at 100 Hertz um, what we should see right away is that the output voltage should be very close to 10 volt peak to peak okay so turn that on and let's see Okay, so okay, so the uh, volts per division is at 0.2, and just like before, we have to multiply that by 10 because these are times 10 probes. So that's two volts per division, and you can see there's uh, five divisions, but the uh, vertical divisions that are covered. So that's 10 volts peak to peak. So that's kind of that's what we expected for the low pass filter at low frequencies. Okay, so um, I don't know, let's go to one uh, kilohertz. Okay, so and we're still at 0.2 volts peak to peak, or multiply by 10, 2 volts, uh, 5 vertical division so still still looking at 10 volts uh, peak to peak output okay so let's go to 50 kilohertz okay so you can see right away the, the amplitude is dropped and uh, hang on let's see So we're at one, two, three, four, just a little over four uh, vertical divisions, but we've had to adjust the volts per division down to 50 millivolts. So we multiply by, that by 10, so that's 500 millivolts per division times, um, we'll, we'll call it four. So that's uh, two volts peak to peak. So the voltage is, the output voltage is decreasing. Okay. And then, so we'll go up to 100 kilohertz so 100 kilohertz and now we're down to we're still at uh, still at 50 millivolts multiplied by 10 500 millivolts per division two divisions um, so that's one volt peak to peak a little more than one volt and then I guess we can do one last one um, so we're at 100 kilohertz let's go to 250 kilohertz that up okay so one two three four about four and a half divisions but now we're all the way down to the 10 millivolt per division setting um, multiply that by tens 100 so 100 times I don't know four and a half so um, 450 millivolts 
peak to peak. So, uh, so yeah, this is um, this is how a low pass filter works. You're going to get the uh, V in, V out is going to be very close to V in at very low frequencies, and then as you increase the frequency, your V out voltages are going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so if we were to plot V out uh, versus frequency, uh, V out on the vertical y-axis and the frequency on the x-axis for a high-pass filter and we'll say like VN is there that was a 10 volt peak to peak um, for the, so for the high-pass filter you're going to start off at low frequencies very low volts and then it's going to start to climb up and then max out at the VN Okay, so for a low pass filter, it's going to be kind of the opposite. Okay, so if we again V out on the vertical axis and frequency on the horizontal axis, so for the low pass filter, it's going to it's going to go like this. Okay, so for high frequencies, V out is going to start heading towards zero and at very low frequencies uh, V out is going to be uh, very close to V in. Okay well there you have it a very basic introduction to um, high pass and low pass filters. Thank you for watching the video.